Hi everybody, my name's Jamich, uh, and today I'll be showing for you the Cross Beats Rev 1000 Rank Point Speed Run. There's also a 500 Rank Point category, the main idea is it's shorter. Uh, and uh, during the run, I'm going to be focusing on playing the game as well as keeping my tracker up to date to make sure I'm actually progressing towards the goal I need to hit. Uh, so during the run, I'm going to hand you over to my commentator for pretty much the entire thing, and I think I'll hand it over to her now. Hello, and thank you for considering this run for your marathon and or event. Um, I'm going to play this as if it were an actual marathon with pauses for donations and everything. So if this were an actual marathon, I would say, Hello everybody, I am a kind of nerdy housewife. The very handsome man you see on camera right now is Jamich. And today for you, he will be playing Crossbeats Rev Sunrise. This is a arcade touchscreen Japanese rhythm game that was developed by Capcom and released in 2015. I think that's enough of an introduction. So let's get this run started in three, two, one, go! So, welcome to the wonderful world of Crossbeats Rev. Um, Crossbeats Rev is in the music genre of video games. If you are unaware, in this genre, you must perform indicated actions in time with the music. In the case of Crossbeats Rev, there are only three simple gameplay mechanics. There are tap notes, which you must tap. There are hold notes, which you must hold for the indicated length of time. And there are flick notes, which you must swipe through in the indicated direction. Uh, you will notice here that every time Jamich performs an action, he will receive a ranking depending on how well he timed his action. The best possible ranking is the flawless ranking. It is followed by the super ranking, which itself is followed by the cool ranking. Below that is the twin rankings of fast and slow, depending on if you're too early or you're too late. Um, even further below that are the twin ratings of fast squared and slow squared, once again, depending on if you're too early or too late. And if you completely whiff and just miss a note, you will receive a failed rating. At the bottom of the screen, you will see Jamich's combo indicator. If you are unfamiliar with the music game term, a combo is how many actions you've successfully performed in a row without missing a single one. Um, in the case of crossbeats, a fast squared, slow squared, or failed rating will break your combo and reset it to zero. So, those of you who are familiar with music games are probably thinking, how in the heck do you speedrun a music game? Aren't they basically all auto-scrollers? And the answer to that question is back when this game had online services, there was a metric that was used to compare the skills of different players against each other that was called, called rank points. Now, rank points are earned by doing well on a song. However, they have a couple of very interesting properties that make this speedrun possible. Um, the first property is there is a maximum number of rank points you can earn on each song. Um, you cannot spam the same song over and over again to grind for rank points. You actually have to do well on different songs. Um, you do earn rank points for doing well on a song. However, songs with a higher difficulty have a higher number of rank points that you can earn on them. So if you play very difficult songs, um, you can earn a lot of rank points. If you play very easy songs, you're only going to earn a couple of rank points. Now, here's the kicker. Uh, at the top of the screen, you will see a purple bar. That is Jamich's life bar. Um, whenever he performs poorly, that life bar will go down. And if that ever life bar ever reaches zero, Jamich will fail the song. And this is bad because when you fail a song, you get zero rank points. You get nothing, nada, not even one. So that really turns this speedrun into sort of a press your luck mechanic. Um, you want to play difficult songs because difficult songs mean you earn rank points faster, which means you have to play fewer songs, which means your time goes down. 
However, you don't want a song that you aren't confident you can pass because if you fail that song, you're not going to get any rank points. You're going to have to play more songs to make up for it and you're going to lose time. Uh, so that is the heart of the speed run is the tension between playing songs that are difficult, you know, but not too difficult. Um, there are also some other speedrunning strats that Jamich will be employing. Um, he will be playing songs that are near each other in the song list so that he has to do less menuing. And of course, he's favoring songs with shorter uh, run time, songs that have shorter song lengths, because obviously those are going to be completed faster and save you time. Um, but once again, you have to balance is this song short with will this song earn me a lot of rank points so there, there's a tension there as well so there are a couple of in-game modifications that jamich will be using for this run these are like official gameplay modifications the big one he is using is he is using what is called tablet mode um, this game did have a short-lived iOS version, and uh, as sort of a bonus for iOS players, uh, this game has what is called tablet mode. Um, you'll see that this arcade machine has this giant field of play. Um, what tablet mode does is it takes this giant field of play and it shrinks it down to tablet size. So you'll notice that all the notes are in the center of the screen. Now, this has advantages and disadvantages. The obvious advantage is that the notes are all physically closer together, which means Jamich has to move his fingers and his arms uh, a smaller distance in order to reach all the notes. However, the disadvantage of this is uh, some of the arcade uh, charts uh, were not written with tablet mode in mind. Um, so, uh, very occasionally, some of the hitboxes of the notes can overlap slightly. So Jamich has to be very uh, careful with exactly where he places his finger on the screen. Um, because if he, he's too, a little too far left or right, he could accidentally hit the hitbox of the wrong note, and uh, that could potentially cause a combo break, which uh, is no good. So we are through our first credit here. This is an arcade game. Um, so uh, the, back in the day, you would pop in your coin, you would play three songs, and you'd have to pop in another coin. So every time we do a three song set, Jamich will have to do a bunch of menuing in order to get back to gameplay. Um, at the beginning of each credit, he sets his modifications, which include the tablet mode I was talking about. He also dims the background animations. Um, a lot of these songs have really cute custom animations that play in the background, but those can be flashy and distracting. Um, so Jamich chooses to uh, uh, dim those until you can't see them. That's why the backgrounds always look black. Um, he is also changing his speed modifier. Um, this is common in a lot of high-end Japanese rhythm games uh, to have speed modifiers. Um, a lot of people ask me, uh, why would you want the notes to you know, appear and disappear faster? And the idea behind this is that there are fewer, the notes might be going by faster, but there are fewer of them on screen at once and that gives you uh, less to process at any instant, right? Like the notes are going faster, but you have to process fewer of them at the same time. Um, so Jamich likes his reading speed at about uh, 375 BPM for this run. Um, one nice thing is in this game, you can actually adjust your speed mod on the song loading screen, which is really nice because uh, you know, the song's just loading. We're just waiting for the song to load anyway. So if we can get some menuing done while the song is loading, that is saving us time. The 
this song is so good. This is Megalomania, not to be confused with Megalovania. Gonna have to play Groove Coaster to see that song. Um, it is a song by Naoki Maeda, which uh, a lot of you may know from uh, his work on Konami's uh, Bimani series, uh, especially Dance Dance Revolution. Uh, Naoki wrote a lot of the music for that game. Okay, so this is a Capcom developed game, and as you know, Capcom has a huge backlog of, of very good video game music, uh, including this Mega Man song here. So uh, while we're rocking out to some Mega Man music, get out all your Mega Man related emotes, um, I'm going to let the host take it over and read some donations. And now I'm going to leave it blank here to give some simulated donation reading time. It also gives me a chance to take a sip of water. This is the continuation of the simulated donation rating time. And thank you very much, my wonderful host, for all those donations. Um, so there are music, or there is music from other Capcom games uh, in this game, uh, including there are several Monster Hunter songs, uh, there are several Street Fighter songs, there's one Phoenix Wright song, and there's a Ghost and Goblins song. So that's pretty cool. So let's get back to rank, rank, rank points. Um, Breaking down the formula used to actually calculate rank points, um, rank points are equal to the numerically assigned difficulty of the song times a metric called the clear rate. Um, each song in this game has a, a numerically assigned difficulty from, I believe, 1 to 99. And you multiply that by what, it, by what is called the clear rate. Now, 20% of your clear rate comes from your combo. You just take the biggest combo number you have at any point in the song, and you divide that by the total notes of the song, and that accounts for 20% of your combo, um, or of your clear rate. Now, what this really means in terms of gameplay is that if you're gonna break combo, you would rather do it at the beginning of the song or the end of the song. If you break combo in the middle of the song, that's going to cause you the most loss in rank points. Obviously, getting what is called a full combo, which means you don't miss a single note, you get every note in the song, um, that's the best. But if you're going to break combo, beginning or end is better. Breaking combo in the middle, it, it hurts. The other 80% of your rank points come from the individual ratings you receive on your notes. Um, flawless and super ratings count as full credit towards your clear rate, whereas cools count as half credit towards your clear rate, and uh, anything below that doesn't count at all for your clear rate. So uh, if you get anything below a cool, you are not earning rank points for that. Uh, of course, the, the result of this is we're hoping to see lots of flawlesses and supers. A couple cools here and there is really great. Or it is not too bad, um, but we don't want to see anything below that. 
There are also a few modifiers that allow you to earn rank points faster. The most significant of these is the life gauge multiplier. There are three different life gauges on this game, each in increasing difficulty. And if you play on the uh, most difficult life gauge, which is called the ultimate life gauge, um, you earn 20% more to your rank points. Um, so Jamich will be playing all these songs on the, the ultimate life gauge because that extra 20% is huge. Um, it means you can knock entire songs off your speed run, which saves a huge amount of time. Now, of course, the difficulty uh, or the uh, disadvantage of that is that the ultimate life gauge is brutal. If you start losing your timing even a little bit, that ultimate life gauge just drops like a rock. And once again, if you fail the song, that life gauge empties, uh, you're not getting any rank points. So it's very high risk, high reward. Um, the other more minor um, modifier to rank points is uh, each song has five different difficulty levels. The most difficult of which is the unlimited difficulty. And if you play any song on the unlimited difficulty, you get plus 1% to your rank points, which isn't a lot. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it can add up over time. So right now we are playing uh, Dazzling Season. This is also by Naoki Maeda. Um, Naoki Maeda was actually the sound director for this game, so uh, he was responsible for all the music. Um, it's really cool because he brought over a lot of his previous co-workers from Konami's uh, Bimani series, people like Slake and uh, Ram. Uh, so there, if you're uh, uh, familiar at all with uh, Dance Dance Revolution or Konami's Bimani series, you're going to recognize a lot of these vocals or a lot of these uh, producers and vocalists. Um, some of the vocalists came over from Bimani too. So, um, if you are looking at this game and you're like, wow, this looks really cool, how can I play this game? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is it's a little bit difficult. Uh, there was an iOS version of this game, however, it has been discontinued and removed from the iOS store, so it's, it's hard to get it that way nowadays. Um, there is an arcade chain called Round One in the United States. Um, all, uh, many but not all locations of Round 1 do have uh, Crossbeats machines, so that's one good way to check it out. Um, I also know there's several Crossbeats arcade cabinets that are traveling the con circuit right now. Um, several of the providers who provide arcade games for conventions uh, do tour their Crossbeats rev machine. And the last way to sort of play Crossbeats is there is a spiritual successor on the iOS um, that is called Seven's Code. And it has, it's not exactly the same, but it does have some gameplay modes that play very similar to Crossbeats. Um, as far as the cabinet we are playing on goes, uh, this is an official cabinet with official arcade hardware and software. It is privately co-owned by Jamich and myself. Um, we were able to acquire it through one of those arcade uh, cabinet convention providers. Um, in addition to, to you know bringing arcades to, or arcade games to conventions, a lot of those providers also do private sales, and fortunately we were able to acquire this cabinet through one of those providers. Um, we are running what is called the offline patch in the Crossbeats community. It is the last official update to this game before it was uh, offline, or online services were taken down. Um, when that online, offline patch uh, went live, it removed a lot of the licensed music for this game. 
Um, so this game used to have like some uh, baby metal, it had some anime themes, uh, things like that. Uh, that licensed music was removed in order to prevent, you know, licenses expiring in the future and problems with that. So most of the music that is left in this game is, uh, is Crossbeats original. There's a few Toho songs, there's a few uh, Vocaloid songs that are still on here. Um, but most of it is completely original music to the game, and uh, Naoki did a really, really good job of getting a lot of really good producers to make a lot of really good original music. Um, I do recommend just, uh, trying out the or, uh, trying out the soundtrack. Give the soundtrack a listen. There's uh, so much amazing music in this game. You're only getting a fraction of it in this speedrun. Uh, currently, Jamich is playing Romancing Game um, with uh, uh, the vocalist for this song is Mapu Mapu, who some of you might know from the Vocaloid cover community. Struggling a little bit, but we still have that full combo. Look at that combo! That's a good combo! Nice full combo! Um, if you're unaware of that term, in music game, a full combo means you did not break your combo at any point in the song. It means you hit all the notes with some level of competence, so that's very good to keep a combo going for over 500 notes. Okay, so now we are moving into our last credit here. Um, this is going to be the last lull. In, in my commentary here, so I'm going to hand it over to the host and you can just read donations for the entirety of this first song. And now I'm going to move into some more simulated donation time, so it's going to be quiet for a little bit. Yeah, the donation time for this run is going to be infrequent, but in large chunks. Which I know when I'm hosting is kind of how I like it. Okay, thank you so much to the host for those donations. Next up we have Pyromania. This is Jamich's favorite song in the entire game. Uh, he plays it on every stream he does by the, the producer Komi. Um, so Jamich is going to be using some interesting gameplay modifiers only on this song. He is going to use the flip modifiers. Uh, there is a vertical flip and a horizontal flip. Um, as the name implies, uh, these uh, mirror the notes in the appropriate direction. I know uh, vertical flip is a concession to left-handed players, so it moves all the notes from the right-hand side of the screen to the left-hand side of the screen. And uh, horizontal does the same with up and down. 
The reason that Jamich is doing this is this song has a consistent drum beat on one hand, and Jamich wants to move the more difficult part of that drum beat to his dominant hand. Um, it just makes the song a lot more consistent for him. Also, oh, this song is just so good. You can't see me, but I'm dancing in my chair. So yeah, see that consistent drum beat? You're playing one note with one hand the entire time. We're getting pretty close to the end of the run here. We're gonna finish this song and hopefully have one more song. Um, We are looking to get that 1,000 rank points. So next up, we have another uh, song from the Capcom backlog of music. It is Code Underscore from Resident Evil Umbrella Core. Did you know Resident Evil is called Biohazard in, in Japan? This is a Japanese game. That's why it says Biohazard on the album art. Uh, we use this song because it has two very good properties. First of all, it is the single shortest song in the game. The song with the shortest song length. That makes it great for a speedrun because it's quick. Um, the other nice property of this song is it has a very easy unlimited chart. Uh, right, remember, once again, you get an extra 1% to your rank points uh, when you play on the unlimited chart and most unlimited charts are pretty mean but this is actually a pretty simple straightforward unlimited chart so you can take advantage of that extra one percent We're going to be coming up on time here at the end of this song. Um, the time stops when we see the, the frame that we see the results screen. So get ready on time. We got to get through the clear screen as soon as we see the results screen time. There we go. And that is the cross. We have achieved over a thousand rank points which means this is a valid 1000 rank point speed run and that is the run i'm gonna turn it over to jamich for some final words we got a solid a solid 1033.45 rank points on that run that's not bad um here's where i'd actually be doing shout outs and thank yous if this were a real marathon uh and then wrapping up and handing back over the host once again, thank you for considering this run for your marathon. 